over iHeartRadio or NBC Sports affiliates. Until then, have yourself a great evening, and we'll talk soon. KCAA Loma Linda, 1050 AM, 106.5 FM, and now 102.3 FM. Did you know that every dollar you put into a piece of real estate makes you money five ways? Cash flow, money in your pocket each month. Equity capture, the thousands of dollars you create when you have the right team and buy the right property using the right map. Appreciation, real estate doubles in value about every 10 years. Equity buildup, renters pay down your mortgage each month. And finally, the tax advantage. We pay almost no taxes on our cash flow and capital gains. These are the five ways we make money in real estate, which is why real estate accounts for more millionaires in the world today than any other investment vehicle. You should have some real estate in your portfolio. To learn how, attend one of our free workshops. Call 1-866-971-8970 or go to GetMyMapNow.com and register for the next available workshop. That's 866-971-8970 or GetMyMapNow.com. Hey, Ryan, do we have any beer in the fridge? Nah, I thought you got some. Oh, the game starts in five minutes. And you drank the last beer at midnight on Friday. I wish there was a place that delivered beer. Yes, I'm Captain Crafted. I'm here to bring you beer. That's Captain, C-R-A-F-T, apostrophe D. Why? Because there's no E, just a D, as in deliver, because Captain Crafted delivers. That's right, the Crafted Beer Store in Redlands is now open for business with great prices and deliveries of your favorite beer, wine, spirits, water, ice, and mixers. Did I mention their great prices? That's C-R-A-F-T. D B E E R store.com or Fred Crafted Beer Store on Facebook.com. Make it easy. Google Redlands Beer Delivery. Look for Crafted Beer. Crafted Beer Store in Redlands is now open for beersness. And I'm here to deliver. This is Dick from Carpet Masters. Carpet Masters has been serving the Inland Empire for over 60 years. We are locally owned and operated by the Stevens family. We not only clean carpet and furniture, we clean many loose rugs, including oriental rugs. Oriental rugs are cleaned in our modern facility where the fringes are cleaned by hand, then hung in our modern facility to dry. We do not use steam cleaning to clean your fine furniture. Furniture is cleaned by hand using the same absorption cleaning used in the White House. Some furniture we bring into our plant to clean properly. We normally use two men on each cleaning job using the extraction method. There is nothing that would clean carpet better for our customers. Our job is to clean properly with quality first. Google Carpet Masters San Bernardino and give us a call or go to carpetmasterssocal.com. Want it easy? To listen to KCAA on your smartphone, that is, listen to your favorite programs easily. No more buffering, waiting, frustration, or downloading a special app. KCAA 1050 AM, 1065 FM, and 1023 FM have made it as easy as dialing the phone. Call our special dial-up phone number and listen until your heart's content. Listen in your Snuggie, (laughs) or whatever. Just listen or even on the road. Call 1-701-801-4444. That's 1-701-801-4444. And get ready to have your mind expanded on the station that leaves no listener behind. KCAA 1050 AM, 1065 FM, and now 102.3 FM. You can also listen at kcaaradio.com. If you're looking for a full or part-time sales position and you have radio, TV, or print media experience, KCAA has a great opportunity waiting for you that pays the highest commissions in the market. KCAA is the only station in the IE that broadcasts on three frequencies, so advertisers receive three ads for one low rate. This makes KCAA a must-buy for every local business. If you're interested in a sales position with us, call 909-885-8502 or email CEO at kcaaradio.com. You're listening to KCAA, your good neighbor along the way.
Welcome to the 90 Degrees Show, the sports center for college marching bands where we recap the ultimate battles from this weekend. And now, here's our host, the Phantom Podcaster himself, Joe Beard. Hello, good evening, and welcome everyone to the 90 Degree Show. I'm your host, Joe Beard, and happy to be of service for you. Um, we are excited to bring you another episode, and we've been having a really good experience here with NBC Sports, so we're really excited. If you are listening, we appreciate it, whether through iTunes, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, our website, our blog, or if you're watching us on KCAA Radio's website or on Tiki or wherever you are on the interwebs. If you're driving in your car, you're listening to 1050 AM, 102.3 FM, and 106.5 FM out here in Southern California. Thanks for listening. At the end of the broadcast, if you decide you like the show, then we appreciate a donation to the network. If you feel so in your heart, of course, just simply go to the marchingpodcast.com and click on the donate button to help improve the show and help build our scholarship fund. And you can also go to the marchingpodcast.com to see this very video of the show in about 24 hours. We notice that after we do the show, it takes about 24 hours to put the video up. So make sure you go to our website and catch up as well. You can catch up on all of our episodes when you go to our website, themarchingpodcast.com. Just click on the listen and follow tab and click on the channel that you prefer. And we put it out there that the last couple of channels we added were on Google Play Music. Uh, we are also on Player FM now as well, and we're on Stitcher and YouTube. We're make sure you check out our blog, blog the number four dot the marching podcast dot com. You also uh, follow, add your email at the top right, and you will get an email notification every time we release one of our great episodes. So again, thanks for listening. Tonight's show is brought to you by Block Band Music and Publishing, SAY Marketing and Promotions, BlockUsUp.com, and Kevin Pete of Remax Patriots Realty. We hope you enjoy the show. Uh, welcome again to the 90 Degree Show. Let me say to, hello to our outstanding panel of guests. Tonight, we are doing another prunalysis just like we did last week. Last week, we did the prunalysis of the Magic City Classic. Tonight, we will be doing another prunalysis with Rashad, except tonight we'll be talking about Crank Fest. Uh, shout out to Bridget, Crank Fest, because we know that she loves cranking. All right, right. <laughs> uh, so shout out to you. And shout out to Christy out there. I'm sure they are all preparing. Rashad as well, I'm sure they're preparing for the Honda Battle of the Bands, which is like our Super Bowl, our culminating of the end of the year. And it's coming up this very weekend. So next week when we do the show, we'll be doing part one of the Honda Battle of the Bands. And in the following week, we'll be doing part two to wrap up. Uh, there's a total of eight bands that participate so we'll try to do four bands next week and then the last four on the following week and that'll conclude our time here on NBC Sports we're much appreciative uh, the marching podcast gives a big thumbs up and we say thanks again so um, saying hello to the panel panelists <laughs> that'll be the one and only the illustrious owner and founder of Block Band Music and Publishing, Rashad Waters, member, an alumni of the force of the great Hampton University. Right. Hampton will be one of the bands there at the Honda Battle of the Bands. I'm sure Rashad is happy about that. What's going on in this podcast, Rashad? Most definitely, man. Very excited about that. We feel that uh, Hampton is going to be that dark horse band that nobody is uh, they're not sure what to expect from them, so it's going to be very exciting. I'm feeling good here, man. Uh, I have been. Um, I'm sure you can't feel this pain at all, but I basically am just now getting out over the course of the last couple of days because we have had a lot of snow here in uh -oh. North Carolina, and when we get snow, we don't know what to do for ourselves. Like the Joker <laughs> said, get a little snow, and everybody loses their mind. <laughs> So, I think I was here in the house for like you know, three days straight. Like I don't think I went anywhere. <laughs> Got wow. a lot done though. 
That's cool. That's cool. I know my mom. My mom lives in Charlotte. And shout out to my mom. I know she's probably watching this. She uh, said the very same thing. And shout out to my crab brother, Avery McFadden, posted some uh, pictures of him and his family outside in the snow making snowman and stuff. But, yeah, like you said, folks down south, when there's snow or anything like that, the whole city shuts down. But folks go outside and have some fun. We definitely don't know anything about that out here in Southern California, <laughs> unless you go up to the mountains. So that's kind of uh, one of the things, one of the tourist attractions, if you will. You can go up in the mountains, like to Big Bear and all that, have a whole bunch of fun in the snow if you want to, and then come down the mountain here and then go to the beach if you want to. That's just one of the things. You do it all in the same day. That's just how people roll out here. But us out here where we are, we're a little bit closer to the desert, and it's the same weather all the time. It gets cold, though. It gets down to like 40, sometimes maybe 38 degrees out here. So, yeah, it gets oh, wow. cold. Yeah, it gets cold out this way. But then um, <laughs> every every afternoon, maybe like 10, 11 o'clock, it gets to like 70, maybe 80, like wow. every day. So well, You know, about two weeks ago, we actually got down to 6. Dang! Yeah, uh, I don't even think it, it doesn't get like that often. So, no, you know no, what's no, it doesn't. And shout out to my hometown, St. Louis, Missouri, where it gets to be like negative six, and it gets Ooh. to be ah. like yeah, you know, ten inches of snow. Um, I remember growing up, I used to during the snow time during the winter, I used to get up and watch the Today Show, and they had a little ticker at the bottom, and those would be all the schools that had closed for the day because of the snow. So you would be rolling up, you would be like, "Come on, come on, whatever school you you be, be hollering at the tracker, come on tracker," and you hope you get your school, and then once you get your school, you'd be like, "Yes," and it depends on if your parents had to go to work that day, then you know it would be off the <laughs> chain. But yeah, man. Um, so yeah, shout out to everybody. It's the winter time, so we're uh, all dealing with that. So, uh, like I said, tonight we are going to talk about Crank Fest. Crank Fest has now become one of the battle of the bands media event kind of. Uh, one of the folks have put together some ingenuity, and they have uh, called all band heads for this particular event. And it's been going on for a couple of years now, I think, Crank Fest. And they um, have, you know, they select bands that would probably get the most people out. I remember maybe three years ago now, it was, or maybe two years ago, it was just Southern and Talladega. I remember that. You remember that? And that was also when yeah. Periscope was popping. Everybody was uh-huh. on Periscope taping bands. So I remember that. And then last year, they cleaned it up and was a little bit more professional. They had Jackson State, um, Alcorn, um, Southern, and our beloved Talladega. So right. That's we'll, 2017. 2016 was actually Southern and Jackson. Okay, that's right. That's right. So, yeah. So, yeah, they're all putting it together. It's, 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 the event is growing. So, I'm sure next year they'll be having all of... Uh, the more exciting bands, maybe some new bands will get in there, and then we'll be talking about that, I'm sure, next year. But tonight's Prunalysis will be talking about the 2017, our past year. And you guys make sure you listen to Rashad, or listen to us tonight, and follow him on Block Band Music. Go to blockbandmusic.com and check out more Prunalysis. You can also Twitter and go to the Marching Podcast we're always tweeting out archive episodes of our show. And I think the episode where you did the uh, cr- uh, where you did the prunalysis last year and you dressed up like Loki. Um, I think that was I think that's the one that's been tweeting out uh, coming out today. So you guys make sure you follow us and go to the website and catch up on all our shows. We show sure appreciate it. So before we go to our first break, uh, again, I just got the standard marchingpodcast.com's uh, T-shirt on today. I know I say that about 11 times in each show, but make sure you go to our website. Do you have a special shirt on today there, Rashad? Uh, I'm just rocking the block band shirt. Um, I was 
really quickly trying to change because I had put on a Hampton shirt. But that Hampton shirt was a few years ago and a few pounds ago. And I thought it might be a little tight <laughs> on me. I didn't want people to be distracted by the tightness of the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> so I switched it back to my block band shirt here real quick. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm actually dealing with that now because my schedule changed a little bit and I've been like up late nights. Man, your boy been just party eating. So I be coming home <laughs> late at night and getting the carne asada burritos and just kicking it. So now uh, some of the shirts, shout out to the Rogers Brothers um, and shout out to Bull City Music. I know I got those shirts this year to wear on the show. Like you said, the tightness now is like, it's, it's like you said, it's a little, it was a few months and a few pounds ago. So I need to, I, I need to get back at it. I got to slow down to eating at night, man, myself. Um, so, uh, I'll say our shout outs before we get into our first break. Hello to my family. Say hello. I'll say hello to my mom, but hello to Kennedy and Alonso and hello to my wife, Adriana. Alonso is dealing with the flu. So he has been home. He was home all day today and I'll probably have to be at home with him tomorrow. So get better little man. And we had to go to the ER this weekend for him. And you know, that bill is going to be like you know, $36,000. So, you know, we just always want to hold stuff up in prayer. But hello to my family, and shout out to everybody. Shout out to all the band heads out there. I'm sure it's a lot of people making their travel destinations and plans to go to Atlanta this weekend. I would love to be there, but we're going to shoot for next year. Shoot for next year, 2019, for me to be there and for me to be at the Skybox. Shout out to Christy. I want to be at the Skybox and have some chicken. I'm already talking about food already. So, so Rashad, man, any, uh, anybody you want to say hello to or shout out before we start the show? Yeah, man, of course, uh, shout out my family every time. And, of course, a shout out uh, to the marching force who will be making their very first appearance uh, under the direction of Dr. Thomas Jones, uh, March with at Hampton uh, in the Honda Battle Bands. Also giving a shout out to my baby here. Uh, this is our first time appearing on the show. This is my third trombone here. I don't have the first one anymore. I traded her in for this one. And she doesn't have a name. I've got another trombone, a big King 4B I call Copperhead because she's copper on the top. But I don't have a name for this one. But this is this is the one I use all the time now. So you guys that are listeners, you like the Prune Allison, you like the Marching Podcast, let us know what you want the name of this black trombone to be. That's exciting. That's exciting. Is that black? Is that black color on the on the on the horn? Yes, she is. Wow, nice. I don't think I've seen a black trombone, man. That that's pretty cool. So yeah, shout out to and, 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 and real quick, uh, how is married life? Oh, well, you know, there's this whole <laughs> thing where you know uh, Marvel kind of bought the rights to Fox. You know, they're all their movies and stuff. So now Storm has the opportunity to appear back in a movie with Black Panther again. So, yeah, I don't even really want to talk about that. <laughs> you ain't got no competition, do you, man, already? Just a little something, something. Yeah, just. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm excited to check out that movie. I'm sure that uh, you'll be doing that. And then Rashad also, real quick, Rashad also has the color commentary where you guys talk about movies. And stuff like that. Do you also talk? You talk about movies that come out at the theater, or is it a, a long list of movies? Yeah, mainly the show is mainly towards movies at the theaters. We also talk about TV shows, and individually we might talk about whatever. Just each individual person. We actually just put out an episode tonight that was about Black Lightning, which is another uh, black superhero. Oh yeah, uh, it's, our, it's not from the DC comic. So check out our um, go to our Facebook page, Color Commentary. And check us out or look look us up on YouTube. Yeah, man, I have to check that out because I don't have the CW. I don't I don't have cable anymore. We we only stream. We have the PlayStation View and we don't have the CW on there. So, yeah, I need to get a hold of that somehow. And uh, well, check I don't out have Black I don't have cable either. I just uh, pull it up. Uh, you can go to CW's website and pull it up. Yes. Thank you for telling me. I guess I've got something to do tonight. So that is outstanding. Thank you, Rashad. All right, let's go no to problem. the first break, and we'll come back, and we will get into the Crank Fest, the Prunalysis of the Crank Fest 2017. Thanks again for listening to the 90 Degree Show with the Marching Podcast. Your host, Joe Beard, and the 90 Degree Show will return in a moment. Hello. This is Charles Cheese Waters, proud graduate of Russ College 
in Holly Springs, Mississippi, and father of the owner of Block Band Music and Publishing. And you're listening to the 90 Degree Show on the Marching Podcast Network. The source for fair and factual information on your favorite college bands, BlockUsUp.com. Well-written articles, in-depth band performance analysis, helpful resources for band directors, fun band-related topics, and exclusive interviews with some of today's brightest and most talented leaders of college marching bands. Visit us at BlockUsUp.com, the meeting place for band fans and band directors. directors, have you ever found yourselves in this situation? Showtime is quickly approaching. Your budget is quickly disappearing. Your music choices are narrowing. The equipment condition is wearing and your stress level is mounting. Stop what you're doing and contact Block Band Music and find out how we've got you. Check www.blockbandmusic.com providing music, equipment, gear, and accessories to show style, core style, and traditional bands worldwide. And now, more of the 90 Degree Show with your host, Joe Beard. All right, we're back and we're ready to dive into the prunalysis for the Crank Fest 2017. Again, thanks for listening. So, Rashad, I'll go ahead and give you the floor. What is your prunalysis? Again, we have four bands. We had Talladega College and we had Southern University and Talladega in Talladega, Alabama. Southern University out of Baton Rouge. Fine, it's, it's a couple of Southerns. Um, down there in Louisiana, but Southern Baton Rouge, uh, the great Alcorn State University. I love to say Bizarro State because, you know, if you take a superhero and then they always come up with an evil character that look just like them, that's Alcorn. And then the superhero, of course, is Jackson State. We all love Jackson State. The sonic boom of the South, probably the greatest name. Of all of the bands, and I'm sure that's debatable, but I mean, so, the sonic boom of the South, I mean, that is just that is just the, bull, hey, the bomb. Man, don't, hey, don't try to take advantage of me because Christy's not here, because you know she wouldn't let you get away. With I, I know, she wouldn't. Don't and you focus on the commentary to shut you down, but you know, Christy <laughs> would be all over you right now. She would. <laughs> And, and we love a and I know that there's a, a poll right now on HBCU Sports with... Uh, Jackson State and North Carolina a t for being the band of the year. And I think that ends today. I think that voting might end today. And uh, you guys make sure you guys vote on there. Vote for the signing boom. Vote for Jackson State. Everybody is listening. All right. All right. So, Rashad, what did you think, man, of Crankfest 2017? A really enjoyable event. A great matchup between four bands. So, real quick, um, these type of bands for the un- uninitiated, in the, we want to make sure that everybody's understanding. These type of bands are what we at Block Band call Southwest style bands. There's three styles of band. Um, there is the North style, which when you talk about show style bands, North is like Tennessee and North Carolina, Virginia, okay? Uh, Morgan and Maryland, okay? Right. They play a certain type of band. <laughs> then you have your bands in South Carolina states, they play a completely different type of way. Then you have the Southwest style bands. These bands are the ones that are really, um, their influence is being felt all across the nation quite a bit. Uh, and hopefully I'm not, my talking is not slowing down because a sign just jumped up and said poor connection. So if it is, you know, blame Jackson State. It's the sonic boom. That's <laughs> right, right. But, uh, the Southwest style bands, they're known for a couple of things. Number one is their arranging style is meant to showcase their power more so than any other type of band. That being the case, what happens is the trombones are generally playing chords and everybody else is in their stratosphere of their range. The tubas are high, baritones are well, all the brass instruments. Tubas are high, baritones are high, mellophones are high, trumpets are high, 
and trombones are responsible for filling in everything else, okay? So these bands all have that same type of style. So basically, it's just a difference in how they play and in the, um, the range and abilities of each particular section. But the style that they play in, as you go through this particular event, you'll notice they're all playing pretty much the same way. So let's start it out. Um, I'm gonna get. I got five and a half rounds here, so I'm gonna try to get at least two rounds in the first half, and maybe, uh, or yeah, three, two to three in the first half, and then the rest of them at the end. So Southern started this off here. They played a song that was called "Both Sides." Okay, I really wasn't impressed with it. Um, this type of playing that they started out with really was beneath Southern to me. And what I mean by that is that Southern does play with the Southwest style, but they're very articulate. One thing Southern's always going to do, they're always going to come in together, they're always going to cut off, and they're going to sustain those pitches. Now, the pitches may be out of tune, like this might be one player, so this might be another person, he's sharp, he's flat, but it's never going to, that person is never going to change pitch while they're playing. And that was happening from this time in this song. I don't really think it was a great entrance for Southern. Okay. The second song was Jackson State. I don't know what the song that they played was, but it was a song that was in F minor. Had some very clean trombones uh, with some articulate rhythms going on here. We got a surprise for you. Here's what was going on with the trombones. I don't know if you could hear that. Could you we hear did, that? We did. Oh, we're adding a little piano here. The outstanding. Yep. Outstanding. So that, I mean, that was some really articulate playing from Jackson State there. You got the tubas up on high C. So I thought Jackson State did a pretty good job with this. Alcorn State, I don't know the name of their first song, but it was in B-flat minor. The woodwinds got a little work at the beginning of the song. Not nearly as clean as the first two bands. There was definitely a difference between Jackson and then Southern and then Alcorn State. You could just tell, like, okay, these bands are playing differently as far as articulation is concerned. Yeah, two was up on B flats, baritones up on B flats, very strong baritones. Uh, trombones also have a very articulate part, like Jackson State. That's what was it. So that was pretty cool. Uh, but the trumpets were not being completely lost in that song. Were definitely being they were paled in they paled in comparison to the sound of the baritones. Let's get Talladega, their first song. I actually know the name of this song. It's White T-shirt. I yeah, know it's about drugs. yeah. We don't <laughs> I like play that Migos. song because we don't play any song about drugs and white t-shirts. It's about drugs. So if you're a band director and you play this song, <laughs> know now the song is about drugs. Okay, <laughs> Migos though, Migos, uh, Migos. We love Migos. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> not really together on the entrance. This was a something. This was something that played Talladega all throughout. Baritones on high B flats. Not nearly as strong as Alcorns, but then they're a much smaller band. The melody instruments don't sound solid, really, on the actual melody in the song. And the trombones are really fighting a losing battle against the baritones here. Um, I'm going to give that first round to Jackson State. I know that you're excited about that, Joe. Um, but that first song was, was very clean, and I love the trombones on that song. Let's go ahead and get into the uh, the second round here. So the announcement, <laughs> the announcement was funny. It's like, I see y'all don't want to play in the, no marches. They're not playing any concert band stuff. They don't want to give y'all any dynamics. They just came out throwing punches. Uh, you know, right? <laughs> these, are just, these are the announcer's words, not mine. So that was funny. You could tell that he actually was a band person. You know, as soon as he said marches, you could tell, okay, this is somebody that actually knows something about band and not just the local radio DJ. Okay. Um, Southern started out with a song, a rap song called uh, Drowning. And there's a really cool part in here where they're trading off the lick. It's a piano lick, and they're trading it off in the trombones. It's, uh, I think, is. Yeah, that is it. That's so that's cool because what's happening is that the first and the second trombones are trading off between each other. I thought that was very clean, and it's actually. A, pretty creative way to arrange. Southern does that from time to time. They've changed a lot in their arranging style. The trombones are getting a lot of interesting things to do in these last few years. So uh, shout out to the currently arrangers, current arrangers. Baritones all the way up to high C. Now, I think this is the highest they play in any song. Everything else that they play pretty much that I saw was on B flat. Tuba articulations were not very clear or very 
full, exceptionally blatty during this song, and it really took away. Uh, very strong re-entrance. When the band came back in, that's a re-entrance. That was very powerful. Strong trombones, and the rest of the band was playing around that. That's that Southwest style I was talking about, where the trombones provide the pad, and everybody else plays around them, and it sounded great. Mellophones were sliding all over the place, though, which means that uh, with the mellophone, it's exceptionally easy to change pitch all over the place and that's exactly what they were doing and that's not what you want to do great last note from the screaming uh, trumpet at the end uh jsg played a slow song i don't know what it's called it's in d minor i believe and it was a very poor showing from jackson state i thought the trumpets were sliding all over the place that normally doesn't happen with trumpets i said that happens with mellophones but trumpets shouldn't be sliding all over the place it's easy to play clear notes so play clear um they're only going up to a high C, if I'm not mistaken. Baritones are a high A on this one, trombones on the G. Uh, however, oh boy, mellophones on this song, all the way up to concert high A. There's a run at the end of this song, Joe. Uh, starts on concert D. Does that sound like a note a mellophone should be playing? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean... But they're up there, the whole section. That's a concert A. Let me put that in perspective. That's a D for them, okay? Um, that would be like everybody in your trombone. I'm sorry, that's an E for them. Sorry about that. I know people are about to jump on my case. That would be like your entire trombone section or your trier baritone sand section playing a high D above the staff. Hmm. That would be like your entire trumpet section, Joe, playing a high E above high C. Wow. The whole section. I mean, if it's not the whole section, it sounds like it. That's impressive. Um, and I'll just go ahead and, and say it now, if I, unless I run out of So I've got it said, unless I run out of time later. I think they have the, strong, the best mellophone section of all these bands, probably the strongest mellophone section I've heard. I mean, these guys, wow, they're, they're impressive. They're sliding all over the place, though. But as far as their range is concerned and the number of people that can do it, impressive. However, Jackson State's biggest strength is also their biggest weakness, and that's their mellophone section. And what I mean by that is that the trumpet section, unfortunately, Joe, I'm sorry to hurt your feelings, but the trumpet section just can't get around them. They have like 20 of them. You need <laughs> like 40 trumpets to be able to keep up with that. And that's a regular mellophone section. You really need like 50 or 60 trumpets to keep up with these mellophones. And because of that, it really puts a damper on anything that Jackson State plays because the trumpets can't come out and lead the band like they're supposed to. Alcorn State played EXO Tour Life. This is a song that's like, uh, something to the head, all my friends are dead. Something to the head. I hate that song. All my friends are dead. I hate that yeah. song. What in the world? Yeah, it's so what sad. In the world? Like, for real. I hope ain't nobody on edge listening to that song. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, was, I was like, what in, the, what in the world is happening with millennials these days? Man. <laughs> <laughs> real quick, shout out to Logic. There's a song called 1-800 that I heard not long after that song. And it's something like, uh, you know, I want to die today. Who can relate? But, oh my God! Yeah, and I was like, man, this song is sad too. But in actuality, it's actually a song about suicide. If you keep listening to the song, you will see how he turns it around and talks about how he wants to live. And the name of the song is actually the, su the, the phone number for the suicide prevention hotline. So shout out to Logic. No shout outs to whoever. I forgot who did this song. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, B flat minor. The first note was pretty confident. Big contrast with them between them playing soft and being loud. And what I mean by that is when they play soft, they're not playing very full. Uh, but when they play loud, they open up their sound and really fill up the instruments. Percussion section is pretty messy here. I do listen to percussion as well. Mellophones are really all from those concert A flats that they have there. Um, and that really stands out in comparison to Jackson State because they only had like a couple, maybe two or three mellophones that were hitting that note versus the entire section of Jackson State going up to concert A. Uh, let's figure, let's finish up the round with The Weekend by Caesar or Cesar. I don't know what her name is. She look good. Though. I don't know. Don't. Um, <laughs> this is a tough one. I believe it's an A flat minor. Uh, please don't kill me, Rangers. You know, I didn't have time to study it, really. 
uh, tubas are not articulating this song at all. And I mean, it's, uh, and I said this at the beginning, they have a hard time when it comes to coming in to get together. We'll say, hey, you need, to spend, you need to spend more time in concert band. One of the things that I had a problem with is that I was not a very sensitive player. Like I couldn't um, articulate cleanly and not be loud. Concert band did teach me that. It, it was, I was forced to have to be able to come in soft with a strong tone. And this is the problem that Tyler Tavadega has, is that our, their articulations, they just cannot articulate together and cleanly. And they have to work on that if they want to keep up with the other three bands. Um, they had an attempt here at some really good articulation. It's a pretty good arrangement, but their tone quality was suffering so bad that you can't say, oh man, this articulations and these runs they're doing are awesome because the, t the tone quality was so bad. Uh, Mellophones on concert A-flat here. This was just a really poor showing for Talladega here. I'm going to give round two to Southern University. All right? All so right. Let's see if we can get in. Uh, huh? well, really quick, I want to uh, want to say that uh, we do uh, have our little internal conversations here in um, the Sonic Boom of the South, and I'm sure every band does. But when Jackson State decided to um, go the route to get more popularity or add more volume to themselves, they change the instrumentation. So, you know, we used to be maybe more standard, following the pyramid, if you will, but now adding more baritones and more mellophones, like you said. When we were in the band, Rashad, um, we did not have the same instrumentation for mellophones and baritones. They were loud just as is. I remember, I think I've talked mm -hmm. about this, there was two guys that played baritone, and uh, they were off the chain just by themselves. And I remember they said, man, you got to make sure on Get Ready, you come up and make sure you go up on the second time because them baritones are coming. Now, since Jackson <laughs> State has changed their instrumentation, they have not, and I'm glad you said what you said, they have not changed the numbers there with the trumpets. So uh, I believe that they're doing – uh, what they can to match the trumpets, kind of, to, kind of like Southern. They have so many trumpets to balance what they're doing. But you're right, the trumpets, the the royal order of trump funk, as we like to be called, we are not coming through on the songs. And I will say the rest of the band has been so jealous over with us over the years that they are having a good time of, uh, you know, rip, putting us through the mud, talking about how we're bad and how we're horrible. And, you know, that's just how it is. But it's they're just jealous because we have our own picnic and we have such great camaraderie with each other and we ran the band for you know numbers of years but yeah i just wanted right, to right. add that side note in there shout out to the royal order of trump phone they're just trying to get that revenge for how y'all beat them down in the 90s you know what i'm saying i mean that's all it is that's all it is but i hope we come out next year with 90 trumpets and then won't nobody be saying nothing then but yeah we'll, we'll see <laughs> We'll see. But, yeah, let's go ahead. We can go to round three and uh, talk about round three, and then we'll go to break after that. All right. I'm going to say this, and uh, I didn't get this idea from A&T, but bands need to use this. Now, A&T doesn't do it anymore. Bands need to go to flugelhorns. If you have, let's say you have 60 trumpets just for round numbers, okay? Let's say you have 30 trumpets, okay? If you take the bottom 10 trumpets and switch them to flugelhorn, it will completely change the sound of your band. You probably won't have the balance issues that you're having. A trumpet is a very thin conical board instrument, particularly if you're not using professional, I'm sorry, cylindrically board instrument, but particularly if you're not using professional board instruments. Also, if you're not playing in a unified way where you're trying to get everybody in tune, that sound is just going to be really thin. But if you add flugelhorns to that, that's going to add a lot of depth. It's going to help those third players get those chords out a lot better. And the flugelhorn is probably about uh, one to two times louder than a, um, a trumpet is. Okay? It's, also, it's just going to thicken out that sound. It's also going to help your mellophones because mellophones, again, are going to be sliding all over the place. Flugelhorns don't slide like that. They're just made differently. So if you have your flugelhorns playing with your mellophones, you have that nice mellow tone but you won't have the pitch issues. If you listen to a and a couple years back, they were, the pitch issues that they normally would have had in the mellophone section like everybody has, they didn't have it as much. So, guys, think about that. Think about switching to flugelhorn. All right. Uh, Rashad, so Southern, uh, real, real yeah. quick, Rashad, um, I know uh, that's actually a good 
point of conversation, I actually brought that up, and we talked about that a little bit about the flugel horns. All right. And uh, you know, it was an interesting thing. A lot of folks had you know their two cents about it, but yeah, it was a huge debate. We do have a phone call. Um, I want to get to the phone call, and then we'll see how we'll do with the third round and fit in this next break. But we got David on the phone. Uh, David, how you doing? Thanks for calling into the show. Hey, good. Uh, yeah, it's the first time I've heard it. Uh, I listened to KCAA from San Francisco, and first time I heard a show about band music. You've got a kind of a one-of-a-kind show in the whole country, I bet. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Uh, I appreciate it, David. So you up there in San Francisco. Are you from San Francisco? No, and as a matter of fact, you're, are you Joseph? Yes, sir. Yeah, well, I'm from St. Louis. What? Uh, so, yeah, so I'm uh, <laughs> down there, and yeah, so I'm, yeah, greetings from uh, distant, distant afar out there. Hey, you know, the reason I called, um, I, uh, I'm in a chorus up here, and we do a lot of uh, uh, protests and, and demonstrations. And I'm wondering, uh, you know, there are a lot of times, say, for example, the Women's uh, March yesterday, they were all over the country. Thousands, mm. Hundreds of different cities, I guess, were covered. Do, uh, is there much of a band presence at, at protests? Uh, I'm not sure. That's actually a really good question. I'm not sure myself. I would love to... Um actually talk to some directors to see if they would actually get themselves out there because I'm sure that any band would want to help market themselves and help spread the word and you know that'll be uh -huh. an excuse to get Jackson State out here to California to <laughs> then to then come that but yeah um I don't think th um they are actually performing at any of the women's marches I'm sure if there was a band that we, we would know about it well like for mm -hmm. example uh, down here in the mission that's where I am right now you know, obviously, this whole DACA thing, you know, rounding up immigrants left and right. We've had uh, uh, the, uh, I think it's called the uh, Liberation Brass Band. They're, they've been going around for, I'm going to guess, 25 years. And uh, then, of course, we've got a variety, uh, you know, the, the DACA protests. If ICE goes in and tries to round up, I think they're claiming they can get tens of thousands of immigrants from California alone, and they're threatening to do it any day now. You do a, a brass band out there in front of where they're parking their trucks, and you start playing the right songs, you might really be able to draw a crowd and, you know, <laughs> help uh, play hell with, with their getting out of town, uh, you know, with, with a bunch of, you know, rounding up people and tearing away their homes and everything else. And uh, I'm, I'm in a thing called the Rock and Solidarity Chorus. We tend to do labor songs, although we did a uh, whole series of pieces uh, from uh, uh, Paul Robeson, you know, uh, did oh, a wow. lot of different stuff. And as a matter of fact, you know, this whole business about the national anthem, uh, a lot of people don't realize it, but the national anthem was only put into effect in 1939, even though Francis Scott Key wrote it in what 19 or 1814 uh it wasn't put to music and created as the national anthem until 1939 and there were a lot of other competing songs so like woody guthrie had this land is your land uh america the beautiful was in there there were any number of other songs and so you know the whole business about colin kaepernick and you know doing the knee business it would seem to me that we ought to be commissioning new national anthems and uh, that Paul Robeson one that we've been singing, uh, uh, my brain is just seizing up. Uh, Frank Sinatra won a, uh, uh, a uh, Academy Award for a, an eight-minute version that he did, and it's uh, uh, America to Me. This is America to I, I'm out of key. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it... it, uh, it the whole idea of, of coming up with new national anthems. You know, we can be on the defensive all we want with these jerks, but, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh -huh. is that, you know, there are any number of other versions of national anthems that we could be working uh -huh. with. And, uh, you know, well, well, just uh, what was your name again? I'm David. 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 Uh, just real quick, I wanted to speak to something with the, uh, the protest and things. Um, I don't think the bands get involved as much be because they're associated with the schools. 
Right. Um, and so I think they're kind of hesitant a little bit. A lot of times, some of the protests also happen during the summer when bands are out of school. Now, why somebody didn't call some of the bands, like, for example, Howard in D.C., um, this past weekend, that probably that probably would have been something that could have happened, and maybe they were snowed out at the time. Um, one thing I will say, um, there are a lot of bands that do participate in helping people to get out and vote. I've seen that. I know the North Carolina Center has done that. I, I think some other bands in North Carolina and some others will go and round up people and, and get them out voting. And also, I think there's a pretty good picture where you have Jackson State, your band, Joe, um, is actually standing in front of the Capitol um, um, in in, uh, in Mississippi, and they're standing there right in front of a Confederate rally. So I think I'm not sure if that performance was random, uh, but it was interesting to see that dichotomy be- between the two. Yeah, so thanks, thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Work. Another thing, another element I, I just thought about too is um, because they're in school, uh, marching band is usually going on during the fall during um, the the football season, and then a lot of times in the spring season, something I know that we talked about, the band transitions to concert band or symphonic band because you know they right. want to then pick up the musicality things. So maybe a lot of times. Uh, a lot of the bands may may or may not be performing just because of the season. Um, I know, like like Rashad was talking about with voting. I know that I know that's going on in November, so that's like in the heart of what's going on. Um, but we appreciate we really appreciate your call, David. What really fast uh, before we let you go? What is you said the brat? There was a brass band that you were talking about, and oh, then yeah, the chorus that you were the talking about. Liberation Brass Band. Uh, up here in San Francisco, and uh, there have been two or three other ones, if I remember right, but uh, that's the one that, that sticks in my mind at most. By the way, I, you know, just on a kind of a more square level, uh, whether or not it would be a school-sponsored one or whether or not, you know, somebody could just gather about uh, 20, you know, good uh, horn players or something like that and then hire themselves out for Fourth of July parades or Labor, Labor Day parades or whatever. Uh, you know, come up with your own uniforms or something like that. Uh, you know, it seems like a. If you think in terms of a uh, hundred years ago when people had to make their own entertainment, uh, you know, this would be almost a, a form of, uh, uh, you know, a side income, so to speak, for, uh, you know, regular, uh, you know, patriotic marches or, you know, uh, mm-hmm. you know, different things, you know. That's uh, cool, David. And, um, yeah. and then, and then, uh, right quick, what was the part you said? You're part of a chorus. What was the name of your chorus? Oh yeah, it's a rockin', uh, rockin' solidarity chorus, or it's also called the labor chorus. Okay. And uh, rockin' solidarity chorus, and uh, yeah, it's it's tied to City College up here, part of the labor studies. Okay. Well, sounds good. Well, I pre- really appreciate your call, and um, definitely uh, make sure you contact. Uh, so I can get your information, contact the website, or uh, hit us up on Twitter or Marching Podcast at you Gmail. Got Facebook? Uh, yeah, I'm on Facebook, the Marching Podcast. We're on Facebook. We're we're everywhere. We got YouTube. We're everywhere. So yeah, definitely uh, drop your information. Yeah, we'll and, do. And, and, yeah, and, break a leg. And, and, and go Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, David. Hey, good week. All right. Thank you too. Uh, so yeah, man, adding a little diversity, a little, little broad range there to the March podcast, yep. your conversation, and, uh, and and also a good response, Rashad. It's actually um, I just I didn't even toggle that in my brain to talk about uh, the voter voted registration. Let's go ahead and fit in our break, and then we'll get back to um, the rest of uh, the prunalysis here with the Crank Fest of 2017. Really appreciate you listening. Your host, Joe Beard, and the 90 Degree Show will return in a moment. What's going down, everybody? This is Dr. Johnny Goodlow, Jr., former section leader of the World Order of Trump Funk of Jackson State University's very own Simon Boom on the South, the number one band in all the land. And you tuned in to the 90 Degree Show here on the Marching Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Joe Beard from The Marching Podcast. Is your school, club, or organization looking for high-quality decorated apparel to outfit your students, staff, club, or team? Tired of the same old boring white t-shirt? Are you in charge of the upcoming fundraiser or special event but don't really have time to troll the Internet for ideas or compare products? SAY can help with design and product selection. We can even assist with ideas on conducting an effective fundraising program. SAY can help you save time and get your message heard. 
So call 1-800-975-3156. SAY Marketing and Promotions. Give your friend a voice. The Marching Podcast Network is a network of podcasts with a purpose to inspire, educate, and show positive images in our community. Our network produces podcasts about college marching bands, business, health, finances, college preparation, spirituality, instrumentation development, along with one-on-one interviews with strong role models in our community. Looking for a podcast network that educates and inspires to make our world a better place? Then listen to us. Check out our website at themarchingpodcast.com. Tweet us at Marching Podcast or follow our blog at blog4.themarchingpodcast.com. The Marching Podcast, changing the world through positive interaction. And now, more of the 90 Degree Show with your host, Joe Beard. All right, thanks again for listening. If you're thinking about buying or selling real estate out here in Southern California, please contact Kevin Pete of REMAX Patriots, and he will meet and exceed all of your needs. So contact Kevin at 951-858-5942. That's 951-858-5942. Or you can email him at kpsaleshomes at sbglobal, sbcglobal.net. That's KP, his initials, saleshomes at sbglobal.net. SBCglobal.net. All right, Rashad, let's go ahead and go with the third round, man. All right, cool. Can you see me? See. See. Yes, we can. All right. All right. So, third round. Southern replied with the weekend that Talladega just played. Tromos are much cleaner. The band overall is much cleaner. The melophones are messy, though. But otherwise, this is night and day as compared to Talladega. It sounds so much better. Great trump- uh, trade off in the trombones. They got some stuff going on that the arranger had. Great trumpets. Uh, Southern definitely has the best trumpet trumpet section up to this point. And that is the difference, again, between Southern and Talladega, is that when Southern's trumpets come in, there's not so many melophones that they can't. Well, there's a lot of trumpets, and there's not so many melophones that they can't do their job. And so it makes a difference. Jackson State responded with a slow song. Uh, I think it was an A minor. Uh, Jackson State is still in the game here. Um, not nearly, not as clear as Southern. Uh, trumpets are getting destroyed again, unfortunately. The trumpets are really not on a unified, unified front, which front, excuse me, which means they're not blending well together. And there's a lot of not really a good, a lot of blending in the sections. I really like the mellophone runs here. Um, Alcorn State uh, came with a Let Me Know by the Isley Brothers or Aaliyah. Articulations are not really clean. Multi-toms, I see you guys, you need to change your movements to, to match the rest of the drum section a little bit. Just go left instead of right, basically. Um, you can throw the guys thought I didn't see you. Mellophone is sending line out of tune. Poor tone quality on a really good arrangement. Nice trombones in the middle, though. Uh, everybody in this arrangement sounds like they're struggling, though. Can you still see me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You good? You good? Okay. My camera, my phone just went black. So, <laughs> all right, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give that third, that second round there, that third round to Southern. Um, next song in the fourth round was "Until the Pain Is Gone." I believe is what it's called. Uh, I think that's in D minor. Good sustains. Tuba's not solid. That is probably the the Achilles heel for Southern is a tuba section. Great crescendos in the baritones. I mean the trombones, excuse me. Baritones up to high A's. Beautiful bell tones in the trombones and mellophones in the middle. Just watch that tone quality trombones. Don't push it too much. Uh, Jackson State responded with Rockstar with G minor. Good entrance. Uh, another sectional high concert A for those mellophones. That range in that mellophone section really just gives them a lot of versatility in their arrangements. Trumpet section disappeared. Alcorn State played a fast song. I had no idea what it was, but the band director said, we're going to put some 16th notes. Uh, you was 16th. We're going to put some 16th notes on it. <laughs> <laughs> Clean entrance. Nice harmonies in the baritones and mellophones, I think. They are playing. Great job on that. They really show that they deserve to be there. Talladega, keep their heads ringing. Entrance was very, very strong. Talladega does really well when they're playing loud. It's just when they're not playing anything below double forte, that's where they suffer. Um, the crowd could feel the, oh, the middle part really exposed the problems. And the crowd could feel it. And in my opinion, I don't think that this was a really good song choice. I don't think anybody says, man, they're playing, keep keep the heads ringing. I just don't 
I don't know. That's maybe that's my opinion, but I just don't think that's really one of those things that gets it. Uh, round four, I'm going to give that to Alcorn State. All right, Southern. Oh, good. So we should be able to get in the last round here that I got. Southern did Your Tears, which was a gospel song. A great entrance by the Woodwinds at the beginning. Thank you for Trumpets for messing it up. <laughs> I mean, it was. <laughs> oh, man. Trumpets, come on. <laughs> Melophones are unified, but they are so sharp, Joe, that they are between pitches. I'm like, what notice is it they're playing? They, I mean, they are together, but my God, they're sharp. Whole band is not committed to the sound qualities of this arrangement. This was a great arrangement. It's got some incredible runs going through, a lot of really good things for the baritones. The baritones are seen as that instrument that just plays powerful notes. Baritones have all kinds of stuff. It was a great arrangement. The band just didn't commit to it sounding good. They weren't sure if they wanted to blow it or, or be mellow on it, and because of that, it suffered. Um, baritone tone quality and articulations were inconsistent out of tune issues this could have been great um, phrasing you know you they did a part where it says uh, in the song you don't have to cry no more but they would go you don't have to cry no more and that broken phrasing really made the song suffer uh, Jackson State came back with um, bag lady Erica Badu yeah. what's going on with the play call here I mean you know, if somebody plays a gospel song, you should play a gospel song. All right. Um, we, we, we don't have too you. many gospel songs because we we too busy proving to the world how good we sound. We don't need to call on. Well, I about to say we don't need to call on Jesus, but I got to make it home tonight. So, yeah, I, I won't say that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, Let's see if I get time to do that. Oh, actually. That's the main part of that song. Mellophones had that. The problem is that they were pushing so sharp on that that it was really taken away from the song because they, you had to slide into it, but they were sliding past the pitch. So come on, Mellophones, get that together. Trombones sound thin for some reason, and I think that the band was just getting tired at this point. Um, in the middle, of the chord sounded different than the original. I don't know if that was if they were doing a remix or, or what there. Uh, let me see here. All Corn State, they actually played a gospel song. I, I think they did. Um, Mellophone sounded kind of thin, but I love the B-flat minor lick in the tubas here. I like how All Corn State actually played the game. Like Southern tossed out a gospel song. Jackson didn't. All Corn State was like, no, we'll play a gospel song. We got you. And that was cool. Uh, let me see here. And the song, this arrangement was different than probably anything else that was played. It was not meant to push the range, to show how high we can play, to show how loud we can play. It was just a good, solid arrangement. Uh, Talladega uh, responded with Redbone. It wasn't a gospel song, but I thought it was a good choice. Only one trumpet player should go for that high E flat. I mean, if the whole section can't hit it, then one person should do it. The whole section did play the high D flat, and that was cool, but it really rushed during the chorus. They tried to end it by slowing down. But when they did, we went into round 5.5. Southern won round 5. Then Southern played Still Fly right in the middle of uh, Talladega ending that song. You can tell there's some real deep animosity between those directors. Yeah. However, Talladega, they didn't want to just get blown out. And so they came back with Thuggish Ruggish Bone in the middle of that. And it was probably the best thing that they played. Thuggish Ruggish yeah, Bone. They know that song. Song. Yeah. They know that yes. song. Yeah, they know that song. Yeah. So... Uh, baritones were really okay, really doing well during their feature. So they didn't get completely drowned out by Southern. But when Southern was cranking, you heard Southern. So that was round 5.5. Uh, I'm not going to even try to grade that one. So in my opinion, based on the found five rounds that I heard, I would give that to Southern. I think Southern was one, I think two rounds solidly, and other, or three, uh, they won three rounds solidly. And they were still consistent, the most consistent band of all the bands. And I'm glad that that was the same thing that I said. I, I came to the same conclusion as I had during the 90 Degree Show. So that is your analysis for the night there, sir. Yeah, man, I really appreciate that. Um, I know that the consensus, a lot of people um, said that they thought that Jackson State won. Um, overall but i really like uh adding the piano is a really nice touch man and um i like how you all broke it down we've said this before but that cranking battle of the bands that type of stuff that's like southern's field house so unless you mm -hmm. come up there with uh some really good play calling um you really um 
are kind of playing into what they know and what they really, really like. I myself, and maybe you may feel this way, I would like to hear more marches and a lot of this stuff to kind of maybe broaden the spectrum, if you will, to show like the versatility of the band. But uh, young folks nowadays be like, man, get that out of here. Don't be saying, don't be bringing it up no more. But that's just me. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor or a patron to the Margin Podcast, please contact the show and we'll give you the criteria so we can start to pub your business using our platform. Really appreciate you, Rashad. And we're ready for, ready for next week for the great Honda Battle of the Bands. We come to the end of the podcast. Check out the website and donate what's in your heart to the marchingpodcast.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Thanks to you for listening and remember the lectures you deliver may be very fine and true but i'd rather get my lesson by observing what you do see you next week